um, thank you. Uh, we, we'll we'll kind of get started. Thank you, Alan, for uh, getting out of your busy schedule. I know a hec uh, it's very hectic during ASCO. Um, this is a pretty pretty exciting time for us. We've been working on what we're about to talk about collectively, Jerry and I, uh, for th almost three years together. My name is Ken Wagoner. Uh, I'm the CEO of Pharmacite Biotech. Uh, we're going to talk about a technology that's been around for a number of years. Um, we interviewed Dr. Uh, Lohr, who was uh, the principal investigator in two earlier clinical trials over in Stockholm. Dr. Lohr is at the Karolinska. And um, I remember interviewing him off camera, uh, literally uh, when he reached up in his desk and pulled off a vial, which was one of the original vials of these capsules that I've, I've shown you, um, and talked about what it meant to be uh, part of what he believes to be uh, making of medical history, and that's how solid tumors are treated um, from here on out as a result, at least in the beginning of this trial. Um, I, and I believe that. Uh, Dr. Crabtree, who is with us, he's our chief operating officer, Di Jerry's over in the, in the corner, um, has been doing cancer research for over 50 years. Jerry would be retired, but for, but for this technology. And so we're here to talk about a little bit about the company, not much. Uh, we're fortunate enough to have uh, Dr. Gunsberg, Professor Dr. Walter H. Gunsberg. Um, he's a professor at the University of Veterinary School of Medicine and his colleague, Dr. Brian Sammons. Um, they, along with Dr. Um, Lure, developed this technology. At the time, uh, Brian was, may I call you Brian? Okay. <laughs> Brian was the chief uh, medical office, a chief scientific officer for Bavaria Nordic. Bavaria Nordic had this technology. That's where it was developed. And then one of their principal consultants uh, was Walter. And so Walter, uh, with Brian and Matt, Dr. Lohr, uh, set off in Ros at Rostock, Germany, and, uh, and figured this out. Now, as luck would have it, uh, Bavaria Nordic was able, uh, was called to a, they were taken away to a caller higher, higher, higher calling. Uh, the three of them actually took this technology from Bavaria Nordic and, um, and continued to develop it. it uh, for reasons I won't bore you with, it fell off the face of the earth uh, back in 2007 uh, through, uh, I think, an errant business decision in terms of uh, certain investment partners. But we have brought it back to life. Uh, Jerry and I met uh, with Walter and Brian. We met Dr. Lohr uh, at the Munich airport for an hour meeting back in early 2014. And uh, I think it's fair to say Matt thought the technology had died and gone to heaven. And uh, no, we told him we were bringing it back to life, and so that's why we're here. And it's taken us about three years to, to literally, for my purposes, get to the eve of starting a phase 2B clinical trial. So what we are is that we're a development stage biotechnology company, and we're developing treatments for all forms of solid tumors. Uh, cancerous solid tumors and diabetes, but we're using the encapsulation technology. It's rather unique. Uh, the two co-developers will talk to you about it in more detail to develop therapies for both cancer and uh, diabetes. Um, and now you've seen in the invitation that the, the treatment for uh, cancer involves implanting these encapsulated uh, live cells as closely as we can to the tumor in the pancreas. We're going to be talking just about pancreatic cancer today. And then giving um, iphosphamide, you all know, familiar with it, at one-third the normal dose. And in the earlier, albeit small, two clinical trials that were done, uh, they got remarkable results in terms of the uh, cytotoxic effect on the tumor. Uh, the idea behind, uh, so the idea behind uh, the diabetes therapy is we have a cell line that has been genetically engineered as a liver cell line to um, read your blood glucose level, to generate insulin, store it, and then give it to you when you need it. The idea is that we'll encapsulate those cells. They're called melogen. A professor down at the University of Technology, Sydney, had, has developed those, got quite a bit of attention six or eight months ago when a peer-reviewed paper was published about the melogen cells. So that really put us on the map um, as a small biotech company developing a therapy for pancreatic cancer. Um, we want to talk a little bit about, and this is a just, you're going to hear this. Uh, it, we really are talking about the treatment of all solid tumors. It's targeted chemotherapy in that we put these capsules as close as we can through interventional radiology uh, to, the si to the tumor, uh, and then the, the uh, capsules themselves uh, are uh, in place, implanted, and then stay there, and then we give uh, the dosage that we need to get 
the incredible cytotoxic effect right at the source of the problem in the patient. This is a picture that we put together, and I think you probably see this in some of the other presentations. Actually, Dr. Batra put this picture together for us because we were having a hard time, I was, uh, graphically showing what we do. And all this is simply uh, showing the patient uh, with uh, being given interventional, through interventional radiology, uh, the uh, capsules being implanted. And you can see here what occurs. The uh, capsules uh, stay in place, and then as the IFOS is brought through the capsules themselves, which have small slits that allow nutrients to come in and uh, waste products to leave, when the uh, IV is given, of course, it brings the IFOS to where the live cells are, go, they go into the capsules, and that's where the, uh, the conversion takes place, taking the place of the cytochrome P450 system in the liver. This is another picture that's the mechanism of action. This is just another shot. Um, that you can see of how the flow works and where the conversion takes place. Now, the reason we put this um, in a box is because Walter and Brian believe this technology should be called cell in a box, even though the capsules are perfectly round. So to uh, appease them, we put it in a box. What you're looking at is one cell and the mechanism of action. Um, a lot of times I'm asked about what occurs when the capsules are implanted in terms of interruption of the blood flow. And so what we did was put together um, uh, through um, these four pictures what occurs. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. Um, these are your three oncologists that designed the phase 2B clinical trial that we're going to be talking about. Uh, obviously, you, I think you know Dr. Von Hoff. Obviously, you know Dr. Hidalgo. And now you know Dr. Lohr. Um, Dr. Lohr was the principal investigator in the other two clinical trials, and he'll uh, talk a considerable amount about that uh, during, the course of the, uh, during the course of his presentation. Um, we're going to give you a little update on the clinical trial preparations. It took us a while to get the G We have a GMP facility, we being our partner, Ostrinova, uh, Walter and Brian's company, uh, in which we have an ownership interest. Their manufacturing facility is in Bangkok, Thailand, uh, at, the, at the premier uh, Bangkok Thai Science Park, um, and you kind of wonder, well, why are we, why are you in in uh, Thailand, and are you can you really can you really get a facility up to uh, the standards that would be required to commence and finish a clinical trial in the United States? I'm here to tell you, we have. Uh, we're in the process. It has been audited and certified to be the facility's construction to be CGM compliant. Walter and Brian are going through validation processes now. Uh, we're anticipating uh, being, uh, having clinical trial material in August of this year. The protocol synopsis has been, for the most part, finalized. The three oncologists that you saw the pictures of are just haven't signed off on it yet. We were waiting for your input uh, in today's session to do that. Uh, TD2, of course, is our uh, CRO. Uh, they're going to be coordinating the entire trial globally and conducting it here in the United States. Our CRO in Europe is... Um, Clinical Network Services. Um, they were a CRO that was uh, engaged back in 2007 when this therapy was going through to start a marketing approval trial before the EMA. There was a grandiose plan uh, that to do a marketing approval trial in Europe concurrently with a phase 1-2 trial in Australia and a phase 1-2 importation of the data from the uh, trial into the United States and in fact uh, an IND was opened here in the United States with the FDA, and we are fortunate enough to know, and we, uh, I guess we recently discovered it about three months ago, we now have that file, and we're going to be talking to the FDA relatively soon. The same examiner that was looking at the, uh, the IND submission package, or the inquiries that their predecessor company put to the FDA, is still at the FDA and is familiar with this technology. Now, the reason I mentioned Clinical Network Services, they were the uh, CRO in Europe that was going to run the uh, trial. Um, and they are uh, exceedingly familiar with this technology and um, will be quite easy to work with, I think, with TD2 taking the lead here in the United States. The, uh, TD2 is uh, assembling the IND submission package. Um, we're here. Uh, this is a slide that I sometimes use when I'm out uh, presenting to potential investors. And then our principal investigator um, selection process is underway. Um, this is our leadership team. I won't spend a lot of time on it, uh, other than to say Dr. Crabtree has been in cancer research uh, for well over 50 years. 
Uh, Dr. Gunsberg, who is our chief scientific officer, obviously is important to us in the sense that he's done it all with this technology. He and um, uh, his partner, uh, Brian, have developed it with Matthias. Matthias is the chairman of our Medical and Scientific Advisory Board. Uh, uh, although we can't publish it, Dr. Uh, Lohr functions as our, as our chief medical officer in the company. And we also have a, a, a program that's quite involved, and I don't have a lot of slides on it here, um, in our development of our diabetes therapy for type 1 and insulin-dependent type 2 diabetes. Dr. Eva Marie Brantner uh, runs that program. She couldn't be with us. Um, here's our medical and scientific advisory board. Um, uh, really, uh, the, uh, among the best, I think, uh, certainly of a company of our, of our size uh, with the, the um, an enormous amount of dedication and hard work and, um, and um, commitment to seeing this technology through in a way that it does what Dr. Lohr said with a tear in his eye off camera to, to make lives of patients suffering with pancreatic cancer better forever and uh, to treat solid tumors in ways that they've never been treated before. So what, what, I, what we plan to do uh, is to have Walter start uh, as a co-developer of the technology, walk you through the technology, explain a little bit about its history. Uh, Brian will follow up. Uh, they've divided their presentation. And then we're going to hear from, uh, from Dr. Lohr, who was the principal investigator in the two earlier trials, um, who will, I think, be able to answer any questions you have about what the history of all of this amounted to. And then we'll finish with Dr. Hidalgo, who was one of the principal architects of the design of the Phase 2B clinical trial, walk you through the design, and then solicit your input. Now, not to, not to leave anyone out, Ron, Dr. Korn is here. Uh, Ron was uh, instrumental in, in um, the components of the synopsis that we've developed. He actually wrote the... Uh, what he does best, and that's uh, how do you look at cancer and make sure you're looking at it in the right way, and how do you look at it during the course of the clinical trial. So I would, uh, th again, thank you so much for coming. It means a great deal to us. Uh, we're excited about uh, where we are. We're excited about having you here, and we're excited about getting this trial underway.